Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to start exploring the deeply fascinating and rewarding subject of lighting. So in this video we're going to consider something that's referred to as the inverse square law. Now the inverse square law as it applies to lighting brings us to a brand new formula and that formula looks something like this. We've got E is equal to I divided by D squared. So that's the new formula that we're going to need to remember. A, for our electrical installation and design work, this is quite an important starting concept for lighting, but also we need to know this so that we can pass our exams because this is a typical question that comes up in some of our assessments. So before we get too much further down the road, we need to think about what these letters represent and what they actually mean. So we've got our three letters here that we're going to unravel. So we'll see what they mean first of all. So to start with, it's a good idea to start thinking about this letter I and what that represents. Now, normally in electrical science, when we see an I, our brains immediately go current. And it's one of those things where my learners always ask me, well, why do we use I for current? There's no I in current, there's no I in ampere or anything like that. Now, the reason that we use I for current is that when it was first being uh, researched and when the idea of current was being developed and looked into, uh, it was being carried out mainly by uh, people in France. And the idea was that this letter I actually meant intensity du charge, or so the intensity of the electrical charge in the calculations that were being done. And actually that gives us a clue as to what this means when it comes to lighting, because actually in this formula, this has got nothing to do with current. It does not represent current in any way. But what it does represent is the luminous intensity. So you see you've got that word in there, intensity, again, which is where this I comes from. So I in this formula stands for luminous intensity. And basically it's a measurement of how uh, bright a light source is. In fact, under kind of old systems of weights and measures, this was actually referred to as brightness, if you like. So it's referred to as luminous intensity, and it's a way of representing how bright a light source is. Now, in future videos, we're going to explore a slightly different way of measuring light that works better in certain circumstances, but this is really the starting point for us. So I is luminous intensity. The unit that it is measured in is the candela, so that's the candela, and again, you can see kind of buried in there uh, a word that looks something like the word candle, which again is something that we use for a light source, so that's why we use candela for this. And the unit symbol is CD, so that looks something like we've got on our chalkboard overlay now. We've then got uh, this letter D here. Now the D is really easy for us to understand. It just means distance, and it's basically just the distance from the light source to the surface that is being illuminated. So we've got uh, the distance from the light source to the surface that is being illuminated. And of course, under the SI system, that is measured in meters. Now it's interesting, we've got this squared here, and we'll talk about why that's so important in a moment. We've also got here our uh, letter E. Now the E in this case stands for illuminance. So it stands for illuminance. And that is basically a measure of how brightly lit a surface is, or how brightly lit uh, a particular kind of plane is in a room, if you like. And illuminance is measured in a unit called lux. So lux, L-U-X. And the unit symbol for that is L-X. So just to give you kind of an idea of how bright this, this kind of represents, um, there's lots of different kind of standards for determining how brightly illuminated different areas should be depending on what the space is being used for. But if you've got a classroom that is going to be used for night classes, the recommendation is that that would be illuminated to a level of 500 lux at desk level. Now this, this area of um, lighting design and looking at these lux levels and how we achieve them is, is fascinating and endlessly rewarding and it is pretty much my favourite uh, area of study when it comes to lighting but it's something that you can kind of spend the rest of your life looking at and uh, you know maybe we will, we'll see. But um, what we're looking at here is just to start to get that basic concept. So if you've got 
uh, a classroom that's going to be used for night classes, it's recommended that it be lit to 500 lux. If you've got a corridor in a typical building uh, that's perhaps being used by the public or perhaps being used by office workers or something like that, the recommendation is that is lit at 100 lux at floor level. So if you think about perhaps corridors that you've walked through in places of business, uh, the likelihood is if you think about how brightly lit the floor is, that was about 100 lux. So that kind of gives us an idea of the values that we're talking about. And again, it's one of those things that the more experience you build up, the deeper understanding you'll get of where these lux levels kind of sit. So let's talk about this formula and what it actually means, what it represents. Because again, it's important to get under the surface of these calculations and to dig into them and try and understand what they mean. So we've got here, I is the luminous intensity and D is the distance from the light source to the surface that's being lit. So if you've got a light source mounted at a certain height above a surface and you want to know how brightly lit it is below there, you would do this calculation. You'd need to know how far from the surface that was, uh, absolutely perpendicularly, or in other words, at a right angle vertically. We'd need to know what the luminous intensity of this light source was. We'd need to know the distance from the light source to the point being illuminated. We'd have to know how far that is in meters. And if we get those numbers, we can put them into this calculation to figure out what the illuminance would be down at this level here. However, what's quite interesting about this is it's got this squared over the distance there. And that's really important because that's what gives this kind of type of formula its name, the inverse square law. And you actually, you find this kind of structure of an equation buried everywhere in physics. Um, it, it affects a lot of different things, but here we're talking about in the context of lighting. So what's the consequence of having this squared here? Well, actually, it leads us to a very interesting thought within the world of lighting design. So I've set up uh, an experiment here for us to have a little look at. So as you can see, we've got a torch mounted on the tripod here, and that torch is casting a pool of light onto the whiteboard. So we've got all the elements of a lighting system here, effectively. We've got the light source, which is sitting at a certain distance from the surface that it is illuminating. And it's really this area of this pool of light here that's being lit up by the source that is really the key to understanding the inverse square law for lighting. So when we look at that area, that becomes very, very critical to our understanding of that. However, we're not going to perform the experiment in this video. We're going to save that for the next video. We're going to perform the experiment. We're going to analyze the results that it shows, and then we're going to use that to deepen our understanding of the inverse square rule and exactly how it affects our lighting calculation. For now, let's have a look at some of those key points that we've covered in this video that we'll need for our exams and our assessments. So key points to take away from this video, and we're gonna look at this in a little bit more depth in a future video. We'll do some calculations and try and understand in a little bit more detail exactly what this formula is telling us. Key things to take away, try and get this formula logged in your brain. That's an important one that you'll need to take into an exam with you. E is equal to I over D squared. Remember what these mean. E is the illuminance, how brightly lit a surface is. I is the luminous intensity, how powerful a light source is, how intense a light source is. D is the distance from the light source to the surface. Illuminance is measured in lux. Luminous intensity is measured in candelas. And obviously distance is measured in meters. And that's something that comes up quite regularly in exams. So try and commit that to memory. We'll go into this in a lot more depth in future videos. We'll build on this formula a little bit more. There's also another formula that we need to look at called the cosine rule for lighting. And then we start to look at how we really perform these calculations in a more realistic, real life setting. So until that time, all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching. we mark out the kind of um, diameter of that pool of light, if we look at what the distance is from one side to the other, and again, this is about the point where the light really starts to drop off, so we'll use that as our kind of reference point. What we can do is we can actually measure that distance and figure out what area is being illuminated there. So if we figure out what that area being illuminated is, so we'll put that there and measure that up. 
Uh, you might not be able to see that on the camera, but that is 26 centimetres.